しました。帝国になりましたので、これよりイベントをスタートいたします。本日はオンラインイベント、ヒューズアカデミア、研究から社会的価値を創造するリアルプロジェクトとは、KMD プレナリーミーティング2021サマーをご視聴いただき、誠にありがとうございます。私、本日の司会を務めさせていただきます、渋谷ヒューズの出川と申します。本日はよろしくお願いいたします。イベント本編に先立ちまして、7分ほど時間をいただき、渋谷キューズのご紹介をさせていただきたいと思います。Thank you for your patience.Now we'd like to start the event.Thank you very much for coming to this online event.Cues Academia, what is real project to create social value from research?KMD Plenary Meeting 2021 Summer.My name is Kumiko Degawa from Shibuya Cues. And I am the moderator of today's event. For the beginning, I would like to take about a few minutes to introduce about Shibuya c u s e i s a k u n e n Juichi Gatsu, Tokyo no Shibuya Eki Joket Jokjo ni open Shita, Shibuya Scrambles q u a r e to use Shukbo Sitz no Jugo Kai ni Arnoga, Watashita Chiga Ume Sur, Kain Se no Kyoso Sitz, Shibuya c u s e des. s a k u n e n Juichi Gatsu ni Kaigo is Shune o Mukai Masta. On the 15th floor of the Shibuya Scramble Square Complex Building, opened in November 2019, directly connected from Shibuya Station. Shibuya c u s e is a membership based co creation facility that we operate. It celebrated one year anniversary last November. QWS と書いて Shibuya c u s e と読みます。施設の名称は Question with Sensibility、問いの感性の頭文字から取りました。昨今、イノベーションが必要だと大企業などで歌われておりますが、イノベーションが目的となるのではなく、問いや課題の解決結果としてイノベーションが起きるのであり、まず問いを起点に考えることが重要であると私たちは考えています。この問いの感性をキーワードに、未来の社会価値につながるようなムーブメントを生み出すことを目指しています。The name of our facility is written in alphabets Q, W, and S and read Qs. The name is taken from the initials of Question with Sensibility. In recent years, large corporations have been emphasizing the need for innovation. But innovation is not the goal. We believe that innovation occurs as a result of solving questions and issues, and that it is important to think of questions as the starting point. With this sensibility to question as our keyword, We aim to create a movement that will lead to future social value. こちらがキューズの写真です。14歳から91歳まで、年齢、国籍、ご職業やバックグラウンドもさまざまな会員さんがこちらで活動しています。現在はマスク着用などの義務化やソーシャルディスタンシングを意識した机椅子の配置など、感染の対策をしっかりと行った上で営業しております。随時ご見学も受け付けておりますので、ご興味のある方はぜひお越しくださいませ。Here is a picture of q u s From 14 to 91 years old, members of various ages, nationalities, occupation, and backgrounds are actively coming here. At present, we are oper operating under strict infection control measures, such as mandatory wearing of masks. And the arrangement of desks and chairs with social distancing in mind. We welcome visitors at any time, so please come visit us if you are interested. これらはコロナウイルス感染拡大前の写真ですが、キューズでイベントを開催する際はこのようにイベントを開催しております。These are photos before COVID 19. This is how we hold events at q u e s コミュニティコンセプトをスクランブルソサイティとし、年齢や領域を問わず多様な方が集まり、交差交流することで未来に向けた価値を発信することを目指しています。The community concept is Scramble Society.Our goal is bring together a diverse group of people regardless of age or expertise and to transmit values for the future through intersection and exchange. バックグラウンドがさまざまな会員さんがご活動していると申しましたが、キューズにはご覧の4つの会員プランがございます。個人会員のキューズメンバー、ア
3人以上のチームで活動するキューズプロジェクトメンバー、法人会員のキューズコーポレートメンバー、支援者コミュニティキューズコモンズで構成されています。As I mentioned, we have members with various backgrounds. Qs has four types of membership plans Qs member for individual members, Qs project member for teams of three or more, Qs corporate member for corporate members who are searching for a new business development and collaboration with other projects, and Qs Commons is a community of supporters. プロジェクトについては、現在、渋谷キューズには、コミュニティ型、プロダクト型、リサーチ型、アートとビジネスの共存など、30を超える多様なプロジェクトが活動しています。There are currently more than 30 projects in Qs, including community-based projects, product-based projects, research-based projects, and projects that combine the art and business. また、企業会員であるコーポレートメンバー会員は、新規事業開発、人材育成、社外ネットワークの構築を目的に活動されています。コーポレートメンバーは、アクティブ・イン・ニュー・ビジネス・デベロップメント、ヒューマン・リソース・デベロップメント、アンド・ビルディング・エクスターナル・ネットワークス。さらに、キューズの価値に共感し、新しい価値創造を行うメンバーを応援いただく、支援者コミュニティ、キューズ・コモンズなど、さまざまな会員形態で構成されております。In addition, Keys Commons is a community of supporters who sympathize with the value of Shibuya Keys and support members who create new values. こちらが Keys で活動しているプロジェクトやメンバーの問いです。領域さまざまな問いが Keys で生まれ、磨かれています。これらはほんの一部のご紹介でして、Keys の館内にもたくさんの問いやプロトタイプを展示しております。ぜひお越しいただけますと幸いです。These are questions of the project and members working at Qs. Just a few to show here have been created and refined, and there are many questions and prototypes on display in the Qs. We are looking forward to see your visit. Qs はメンバーの活動を支援するため、多様なプレイヤーと連携しています。渋谷キューズはビジネス、アート、アカデミアなど領域を超えてさまざまなパートナーの皆様とご一緒に会員のプロジェクト活動を支援しています。We have university-wide program collaboration agreement with six universities.And the Qs Academia program that is being held today. 東京大学、東京工業大学、慶応義塾大学、早稲田大学、東京都市大学、東京芸術大学の6つの大学とは全学でのプログラム連携協定を結んでおり、本日開催しているキューズアカデミアというプログラムを定期的に開催しています。The collaboration agreement with six universities, the University of Tokyo, Tokyo Institute of Technology, 慶応 University, 早稲田 University, Tokyo City University, And Tokyo University of the Arts and regularly hold the Hughes Academia program that is being held today. 本日は慶応義塾大学様とのキューズプログラム、キューズアカデミアとして、研究から社会価値を創造するリアルプロジェクトとは、KMD プレナリーミーティング2021 Summer をテーマにイベントを開催いたします。ぜひお楽しみください。ありがとうございました。Today, we hold a Qs program with Keio University as Qs Academia. The theme of the event is What is the real goal, real project that creates social value from research? KMD Plenary Meeting 2021 Summer. We hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and welcome to KMD Plenary Meeting 2021 Spring. Nasan, KMD no Plenary Meeting, Hachimete no Kokai Ban Tonalimas. Kyo wa 
、まず、えー、渋谷球児様からあのお誘いをいただいたり、いろいろな形で連携を深めさせていただいていた中で、えー、このような公開イベントとして渋谷球児さんとご一緒させていただくことができるということを大変光栄に思っています。Well, first of all,、uh, we would like to say thank you to Shibuya Qs for、um, inviting us to the Shibuya Qs community, community and、um, having some kind, many collaborations of different kinds, which led to today's、uh, plenary meeting online with Shibuya Qs. さて、少しだけあの KMD についてお話をしたいと思います。KMD は一言で言うと、クリエイティビティとイノベーションを目指した非常にユニークな大学院です。To briefly introduce what KMD is about, in very short term, we think、uh, and hope that it is an institution of creativity and innovation, and especially now with the COVID 19 ongoing.、Uh, for the post pandemic future, we want to make sure our desirable future is coming. Tokuni, ma, kono yona, shingata corona, cancer, show no, and corona kade, hangailto, sugi no post pandemic na shakai wa, yuri, eh, kodomashi, so yu yona, mirai de atte hoshi to, eh, kangaite, olimas. KMD wa, tayo se ni tonda, basho des. 文化の多様性、世界中からいろんな留学生がやってきています。そして専門性の多様性、いろいろな学問を学んできた人たち、あるいはプロとして活躍している人たち、そして年齢の多様性、年齢層の多様性も持っています。この多様性こそがイノベーションを生み出すための一番大事なキーの一つになっていると思います。The uniqueness of KMD is about its diversity. We enjoy cultural diversity, having many, many international students on board from different parts of the planet. We also admit students from different background fields of study, but also professional practices. And third, the age group diversity also makes us think from different generations' value set point of view. And so diversity is the key ingredient to make innovation happen. So, as Shibuya Q said, we want to also start the session with a question What is your desirable future? Shibuya Q さんとご一緒させていただくということで、今日はこのプレナリーミーティング、問いから始めたいと思います。皆さんが欲しい未来とはどのようなものでしょうか今日はプレナリーミーティングの中でさまざまな KMD のリアルプロジェクトが活動しているさまざまな欲しい未来、そういった姿をお届けしたいと思います。We hope today through plenary meeting,、uh, KMD real project activities that are currently ongoing to design the future of what we want to see for post-pandemic society. Real project involves from starting from ideation, prototyping, and deploying to the society. And hopefully, this deployment leads to the impact. KMD のリアルプロジェクトでは、0から1、すなわち、アイディエーションから始めて、徐々にプロトタイプを重ねていくことによって、最終的に社会に出していく、社会実装を目指しています。でその社会実装を通して、できれば、社会的なインパクトに貢献できるような活動として進化させていきたいと考えています。これを我々はイノベーションパイプラインと呼んでいます。So, let's enjoy and hopefully we can mutually be inspired by the not only the talks, but your questions and the interaction between the audience and us. それでは、これからプレナリーミーティング、ぜひエンジョイしていただきたいと思いますし、このプレナリーミーティングは、こちらからの一方的なあのトークではなく、ぜひ質問などを投げかけていただきながら、このインタラクションを大切にしていきたいと思います。よろしくお願いします。Okay, thank you very much, Masa, and thank you very much for Degara-san. So now it's time to start the preliminary meeting. So 
it's really really happy to have this meeting the first time uh, online and also the public so we have the uh after that, so we will start the, from the individual kind of like research projects from TMD. We call it real project. So the first project is creating the industry. So Dyson so is preparing the movies. It's really, really happy to have this meeting the first time uh, online and also public. So we have the Individual kind of like research projects from TMD. We call it real project. Okay. So the first project is creating industry. So Daya-san, Daya-san, movies. Creative... Oh, creative... Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us on plenary meeting. Today, I'm honored to present to you creative industry. A creative industry. We generate innovations to help local industries and revitalize regional economies. We work extensively with local governments and associations in Japan to conduct various projects by applying innovative design, technology, and marketing strategies to existing local industries to help them develop new markets domestically and internationally, and therefore contribute to the regional economy revitalization. These are the current members within creative industry. We have researchers and students working on various projects and Professor Kishi guiding us. In terms of location, we have five bases located in four different cities, Tokyo, Yokohama, Fukui, and Okinawa. Out of all the projects we're conducting right now, we're happy to walk you through five of them today. Those are Sabe Project, Okinawa Project, Yamisake 2.0 Project, Kinix Project, and Adorno project. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the presenters, starting with Watanabe-san. I'd like to introduce Sabai project. Sabai is located in Fukui Prefecture, which takes about 3.5 hours from Tokyo. Since launching the Sabai project in 2015, we have opened a local project office in Sabai city to support the development of new products utilizing the latest technology. Today, I would like to explain four initiatives as update. First, we are creating a corporate version of the hometown tax payment platform to utilize private funds to solve local issues. At first, we organize local issues and support from strategy formulation to project development. Second, match local issues with companies they want to support. Third, we will support activities that benefit the company. This platform is designed not only for Sabae, but also for solving a wide variety of local issues. Second, we have been developing systems and tools to support SCAL manufacturing. We are planning to visualize SCAL in the entire value chain from upstream to downstream in the future not only materials and manufacturing. Third, we support for development and utilization of new materials that lead the recycle, such as effort for upcycling by utilizing a new paint. Fourth, we are also working to revitalize production area tourism by budget tour. Discover local food, crafts, and super views by virtual tour before you travel. Remotely realize production area experience and interaction while staying at home. Those make people want to meet in person and share them socially. That's a update from Subway Project. Thank you for listening. I'd like to introduce Okinawa Project today. The Amber area is scheduled to be registered as a World Heritage Site in 2021, and it is attracting attention as it has been decided as the stage for NHK CL drama. We are creating a sustainable community through the six industrial base in the Amber area. We will launch Eastern 12 base facility as the six industrial base in the Amber area the next year. 
Trailblaze facility that collaborates with local industries to bring out the attraction of Yamba nature. We are considering three types of tourism as a healing experience, educational experience, and industrial experience based on the facility. We are trying to develop facility original product with producers and residents using materials with regional characteristics and produce them in the workshop. We sell directly from the factory with the keywords of freshly made deliciousness and safety by consignment space and try to develop sales channels outside the facility as well. We plan to collaborate with visitors from outside the region, as well as to make a place for local residents to interact using space. As work style changed drastically under the pandemic of COVID, it is being developed as a facility that can support the activities of companies and educational institutions outside the region. We support consultation on workshop and online sales. We aim to develop a sustainable bridge by creating an industry that will support the next generation regional economy. Thank you for listening. Hi everyone, I'm Karen. Today, I would like to present to you Yamisake 2.0 project. As more and more domestic travel restrictions and traveling concerns derive from the current pandemic, we recognize that there's demand for experiences that allow people to enjoy the feeling of traveling without physically being there. And that's where we came up with the idea of service that incorporate local products and original contents to bring the local culture to our users. So what is Yamisake 2.0 exactly? Yamisake 2.0 is a sake subscription service that delivers a personalized selection of local sake and food pairing to your door. Combining with exclusive contents available on our application, our service allows you to discover and experience local culture at home. In order to provide a unique and personalized experience, we will first send the preference diagnose kit to the user. The user can try the different types of sake and rate each one on our application. With the feedback gathered from the user, we will be able to understand the user's preference and come up with a sake box with customized selection and deliver it to the user monthly. There are three main stakeholders we serve in our service, users, local sake breweries, and food suppliers. We bring local culture to our users and support local sake breweries and food suppliers by connecting them with consumers and promote their products and brands through our original contents. We are currently at the service developing stage, including service experience design, package design, and branding. And we're looking for content creators and sake and food supplier partners. Together, we will explore more possibilities and values this service may bring to the society. Thank you for listening. And if you're interested in our project, please explore more through our website and feel free to reach out to us. This project researches how to deliver and receive independent creatives from an environmental design approach. Music has been socialized by digital technologies, taking various forms. Due to COVID-19, clubs and live houses, which are an important hub of a creative ecosystem, became restricted. While various alternative values are being considered, we will design a better environment for independent creativity. In particular, we consider how to implement two contradictory elements in a service through the process of music production to distribution of independent artists. The two contradictory elements are optimization, 
symbolized by services delivered by Google and Amazon. In Miss Delivery, Serendipity, where you coincidentally meet new music. Last year, in partnership with TuneCore Japan, which provides distribution platform services, and with the support of Red Bull Japan, we produced and distributed contents for six independent artists. We also published a series of flow in the application and researched how to deliver and receive creatives in the future. This year, we will develop a more specific service for independent artists. Okay, thank you very much for creative industry project. So we'd like to ask any questions and comments from the students, faculties, or uh, any public audiences. So あの、YouTubeの方はチャットのところに上げてます。スライドえ、ケミリーの学生もえ、チャットの方に上がってますね。えっと、スライドトートでよろしくお願いします。If there are no questions, maybe for example, Matchan, do you have any question to the project? Uh, no, not really. <laughs> Usually I yeah. do. Yeah. Please ask something. I'm just curious uh, again uh, with the Adorno project. How um, how is it going to be validated? Like, how much capital is necessary to compete with current uh, streaming services? Like, what's what's the business plan for for becoming com competitive on a timeline? So, any answer from the project? いいですよ。オッケー。あの、このようなアドロンみたいなサービスはもうランチにあたって、あの、他のストリーミングサービスが結構もう大企業よりも大きいんですよね。アップルとグーグルとか。それがあの立ち上げるにあたって、そういうタ
他のストリーミングサービスにも競争しなきゃならないから、その競争するにあたって、はいそれ、その戦略はどんな感じですか、えっと、他の,あの、例えば Apple Music だったり Spotify だったりっていうのは、基本的にこうユーザーはこう楽曲を聴くだけでこう、こうそれ以外の特にこう楽曲を聴く以外のこうサービスだっていうのはないと思うんですけど、僕らが考えてるのは、その楽曲のアーティストの持っている権利をこうユーザーがこう買うことによってこう音楽を聴くだけじゃない、こう後々にこの、なんていうんですかね、こう、株みたいな、こう権利をこう売買していくっていうビジネスとしてのこうサービスを、音楽を。そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、そうだ、Good afternoon. This is the presentation of Creato. First, please allow me to introduce our faculties and members. These are our faculty members, Uyo Sensei and Ota Sensei, and our lab members. So far, there are eight PhD students and nine master students. Creato is focusing on experience sharing by network, IoT, and Otaku spirit. Our goal is to develop the computing environment that links our lifestyles, experiences, and the internet together. Our concept is building the network to enhance experience sharing. We use the internet to collect, analyze, and share our activities. In addition, analyze and predict trends. These activities will develop a service platform to share our daily experiences. This unrestricted global environment will improve communication between and within the internet and the real world, promoting the creation of new products and services. Then let me introduce the sub project of the International Conference of ACG Studies. The International Conference of ACG Studies, founded by the National Jiao Tong University in Taiwan in 2012, has been successfully held nine times. In Chinese speaking communities, the word ACG refers to animation, comic, and game. Since the founding of the conference, the scale has grown year by year and the scope has gradually expanded from Asia to the United States. The purposes of this conference are focusing on ACG culture, deepening international collaboration, developing the animation, manga, and game industries, establishing a research environment for ACG culture researchers worldwide. And promoting the cooperation and development of ACG industry in Japan, Taiwan, and mainland China. In collaboration with Japan and mainland China, the 8th International Conference of ACG Studies held a presentation at Keio University in December 2019. Bahamut and UACG from Taiwan, Ban Siren from mainland China, IGCC, and BI from Japan sponsored the 8th conference. Unfortunately, due to the COVID 19 pandemic, We were not able to hold a conference in Japan in 2020. The ninth conference was held in Taiwan last December. Two students from KMD also participated and made online presentations in the conference. We are looking forward to holding the conference in Japan again this year if the condition allows us to do so. We are now also contacting with publishers in mainland China and seeking the possibility of publishing the proceedings of the conference in mainland China. Next is a game sub project, which is collaborating with IGCC. IGCC, Institute of Game Culture Conservation, was founded in 2016. The target of IGCC is to preserve and disclose the game culture as a heritage to the future. Moreover, IGCC is trying to create a new game culture based on researching and investigating the game culture in the early days of the game industry. The main activities carried out by IGCC include conservation and the research of game culture, especially those famous titles in the early days, publication and digital content distribution, hosting and managing lectures and events. We are creating our video contents, a series program called Arcade Game Turning Point and its Game History, 
we plan to have 12 episodes to introduce the game creators, companies, sellers, and players at that time. So far, we have already released 6 episodes. These videos are available on our YouTube channel. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the progress is delayed, but we plan to continue once the condition allows. The next one is the sub-project of Real World Interactive Game. The concept of this project is creating a bi-directional connection between the real world and the game world by sensors. Through this connection, to make game track certain status, trends or behavior in the real world and try to influence such status, trends or behavior. Then how this connection works? First, the game detects and analyzes the change in the real world by sensors. Next, it reacts to the change and tries to influence player's decision. Then, based on the game's direction, the player will make some new change in the real world to interact with the game. Finally, back to the beginning, the game detects these new changes, which makes it a loop. Another target is to expand the connection between the two worlds. In other words, expand the variety of sensors. In addition to sensors on our smartphones, we can also use sensors on smart wearable devices to collect biodata, use web crawlers to collect data from the internet, and even encourage players to manually input some information which is hard to get through normal sensors. The collaborator of this project is BI. Hi, I'm Chen Yu. I'm second year PhD student from Credo. This is my project called Life Project. Designing a reactive object towards negative action received from human. What if the things could cry when you try to abandon them? Well, you might feel guilty and regret. So what is this project about and why is it important? People tend to be careless towards a relatively cheap, non-branded everyday object. We don't want that. We love sustainable. We want to make sure that human will feel guilty if they act carelessly to the object. We believe that guiltness can help changing one's behavior to become better and hopefully be able to enhance the relationship between human and object. So how are we going to do that? Well, first we put sensors on the object and then we put signals such as sound and movement that will react towards the human action. Then it becomes a live object. Thank you very much. Suzukimashite, Dive XR Project des. Kono Project wa Abex san oyobi Softbank san no Nisha to Kyodo de Katsdo Steimas. Dive XR Festival wa Ototoshi, Makari Messe de Kaisai Shita Event des. Hatsune Miko Dai Hyo to Sur Vocaloid ya Kizuna Ayo Dai Hyo to Sur Ima Hayari no Bachar YouTuber tachi ga 出演し大盛況で終わりました。このプロジェクトはバーチャルユーチューバーやバーチャルアイドル、バーチャルシンガーを扱います。さらに音楽やエンターテインメントの形は常に進化しているという考えのもと、コンテンツは使っていきます。その
to the maybe somebody from the students? Nobody? Then maybe can I ask Keiko-san, Keiko-sensei for the questions? Ooh, okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, the, the, there are so many interesting projects um, utilizing a very high tech, um, not tech, <laughs> top notch technology. Uh, I have two questions. Um, there are so many variety of program, uh, projects in Creato. How do you uh, start a new project? How do you judge? How do you, how do you create a new sub project in your team? What is the core ideas? Konnichiwa, Kiko Sensei. So the target of Creator is experience sharing. So mm. this is also our core idea. So once we are considering creating a new sub project, so the first thing we are going to consider is can can we use this sub project to to share our experience with some someone else uh, just for example for the uh, subject we've just mentioned uh, the DiveXR project we, mm -hmm. so the core idea is to use uh, the latest communication technology the mo the latest fifth generation mobile work, mobile network mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. share these mm -hmm. virtual concerts the virtual the uh, the performance of virtual idols to 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 the audience, so just share this kind of experience. Mm. So I think most sub projects of Creator is focusing on this concept to share experience. Share experience using um, new technology. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. New, thank you for your answer. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, wonderful. Gambate kudasai. Hi. Thank you very much. So, any other question? from a student or from public audience. YouTube live で見てる方もぜひ、えー、チャットでもスライドでも構いませんのでご質問あればぜひ、えー、ポストしてみてください。Okay. If there's no other questions, we directly move on to the next project. Okay, so the next one project is the empathy media. So let's start.
Hello everyone. Our project is to develop cyber and cyber technology for expanding people's own possibilities and to create the infrastructure and social structure for it. We will make a future society in which people can have much more life experiences beyond the limitations and restrictions of their bodies. We will establish new possibilities of cybernetic avatar. In cognitive augmentation, we investigate changing the mind with cybernetic avatar. In parallel agency, we investigate integrating experiences received from various avatars into our own. In collective ability, we investigate what happens when multiple people with different skills integrate into one avatar? We are doing research using robots and motion capture system in our new laboratory in Takeshima. We are working with a wide range of collaborators on this project. In the future, we are looking forward to showing you the, the various research of Cybernetic Avatar. Thank you very much. Hello, we are Team Transcending Bodies. Our goal is to apply human augmentation technologies for the people with or without disabilities to expand their abilities. Slide Rift is a body augmenting medium that provides the user with a new physical exercise called drifting. Slide Rift Cup is a sporting application of Slide Rift that provides new opportunities for human machine sports that are inclusive of physical diversity. IKA Physical Performance is a form of physical augmentation that propose a new way of being with the body. Slide Fusion is focused on the remote collaboration of the mobility impaired person and an operator can remotely access an avatar embedded into the wheelchair. We propose the use of eye gaze modality sharing with the remote operator. About autoregressive information avatar, this system extracts information on the body and the expressions of the expressors and presents as audiovisual and tactile information at the same or remote point. Hello, we are Team Digital Skin. We are five members in total and we are working with several companies and universities. As for our team, we have a goal to seamlessly connect humans with MR space. We aim to interact with digital space in the same way we interact with the real space by making our devices skin-like. Synesthesia wear is a full-body haptic suit that can wirelessly present vibration developed in collaboration with Station Limited. We are working to apply this suit in actual urban spaces. We are exploring the possibility of applying it to navigation to a destination or to the presentation of information in MR space. The e-lover is a haptic interface that uses conductive lover and can reproduce soft haptic sensations that are difficult to reproduce with conventional haptic interfaces. Using this technology, we are now trying to apply it to telemedicine applications such as the pulse measurement. Hi everyone, we are Team Empathic Interactions, a new subproject team led by Assistant Professor and Director Pai and Co-Director PhD Mina. Our team is currently involved in a wide range of projects with five different collaborators outside KMD. Empathic Interactions is about designing effective communication and social interaction amongst diverse people with inclusive technology. Here we have listed our ongoing projects. We each explore an extended research based on our individual topics of interest related to human emotions, connections, and empathy. The teams are also divided into three sub teams based on the goals we want to achieve. We focus on utilizing technology and design to achieve effective links that brings people together. Projects like designing social telepresence through ambient remote communication, interactions that trigger communication between strangers, and installations where people can connect in distant places through interactive pods. Inclusive design that caters to special needs projects include embodied experiences in picture book storytelling, haptic empathy and communication support for children with autism. Also inclusive design projects are speech visualization for bridging language barriers and the understanding of dementia through mixed reality experience for nurses and caretakers. Implicit state projects include designing haptic wearable devices for brain relaxation and game flow experience design for better understanding ourselves. 
Through technology and design, we will continue our researches on developing effective ways of bringing people together. Thank you. Welcome to Hybrid Spaces. Hybrid Spaces is enhancing spatial experience by seamlessly integrating the physical and digital world. As in spatial animacy, we create a responsive environment in the form of a kinetic origami surface with sensing capacity. Designing kinetically interactive spaces, we envision an augmented materiality that promotes well-being. The Bridged Reality Project aims to synchronize the data in our physical space with the digital counterpart. Through visualization, we can interact with physical and virtual objects in new imaginative ways. We like to explore how virtual space can improve our lives by creating more interactive games, making the story and narrative react to the player's physiological data in real time. Expressive Skin adds an extensive immersion by reflecting in-game content from the virtual world to the real world. Through gestural interaction in augmented reality, we also create an AR mixer that allows musicians to do the real-time stage monitor mix. We bridge the material and virtual with a vision to create new spatial experiences. Hello, we are Team Liminal Expressions. We are a multidisciplinary group of researchers and artists whose work strives to blur the lines between creator, audience, medium, and experience. And here is some of the research we are doing. Boiling Mind a collaboration with Geist Project which aims to tear down the invisible fourth wall between audience and performers using physiological sensing. Sonotexture, a collaboration with MET and the Cybernetic Being Project which reflects the audience's emotion back to them through adaptive sound design. Frisian Waves, a project aiming to detect and transmit frisian throughout the audience. Aroma Diffuser, using dead flowers as raw material to show people's emotions through scent. A wearable sleep aid using physiotherapy, aromatherapy, and heart rate variability biofeedback to assist sedentary people. A collaboration with the Honda Research Institute which uses multi-present robots that are both physical and virtual at the same time. Thank you for watching. Hey, thank you very much, Embodiment Project. So we'd like to start the question session. So that's one question about, so how do you test and uh, or how do you engage the users? So what are the challenges that you face, especially in this COVID situation? Any student to answer this question? I could address that just, um uh both from my own struggles and i think a lot of the people in embodied media is having um in-person events either not happening or happening at a reduced manner when you have works that are say like public art or installation art it's it's quite a challenge when a lot of the interaction is based on people being in the room and engaging in many times these physical objects and I, I don't know if any of us have found the correct solution to it but I think it's um, an important concern with a lot of public art and so I think uh, finding some sense of, of hybrid approach to public art is um, something both myself and a lot of students are um, are looking at um, but it is it is a challenge um, when so much of it is based on people being in the same room, but not only now, but going forward, that may not um, continue to be the case. Um, so I think this, this sort of mix of virtual and physical experience is, is quite important going forward. Yeah, thank you, Danny. So the next, next, next question is that, so the, what, is, what do you think is the next trend of technology being widely used in the future? Oh, very kind of big question, but does anybody have your opinion, ideas? Maybe a bit. This is a little bit of <laughs> to, to be <laughs> question. Maybe, maybe we can move on to the next question that, <laughs> so the, so uh, from Masa so that, uh, so yeah. the, uh, what, what is the, the future of live performance in the hybrid society? I think this is about more like a yeah, hybrid spaces or liminal expression That's that right. what do you think about the future live performance in the more like a cyber physical hybrid society? 
I think Futa's research started to touch on something that's quite important um, with, uh, you know, we saw this past year, a lot of touring artists were doing remote performances, um, but to what his research was starting to touch on was how do, how can we actually feel that, you know, when you're at a show, it's, it's uh, an, ex an experience that is somewhat physical um, regardless of genre and starting to see what, what are ways that we can transmit, not just the audio and the visual, but the physical experience of a live performance, uh, whether that's through uh, haptics or thermal feedback or, or what that may be. Um, that's the next step that uh, I think has to happen, <clears throat> even without COVID, um, given the opportunity for artists to be able to reach audiences in a more impactful way overseas. Um, people who may not be as mobile and can't as easily leave the home um, and travel to a live house. Um, that's the sort of research I, I, I think is quite exciting and necessary right now. Hey, thank you very much. So thank you very much for the Embody Media project and uh, we will move on to the future class. Hi, uh, here is Future Craft Project. I'm Junichi Amoka. I'm leading this group. So our vision is creating brand new and comfortable future by connecting uh, digital and physical world. In your future, we believe that everyone can make, study, and control digital world interactively using new technology like tangible interface and digital fabrication. So to realize this vision, we regard the uh, craftsman's viewpoint as important. So we find the uniqueness of each material and create new media, technology, art, and design. So currently, we are conducting uh, several research projects with team members, students, and uh, people from collaborating company. So we are making the future of crafts, fashion, food, art, and education. Hello, my name is Lexa Brick, and my research is focused on creating a new method for fabrication. Current alternatives, such as 3D printing, can be time-consuming, inaccessible, and not cost-effective. Craft-like methods, although easier to use, might lack the polished quality of machine-based fabrication. My research is focused on bridging the gap between these methods to provide an alternative that is relatively accessible, produces high-quality outputs, and is more time and cost-efficient. My current prototyping for this method focuses on creating a wireframe and dipping it into plastic-based solutions. By diversifying the materials for both the solution and wireframe, it is possible to adjust the hardness and durability of the resulting 3D object. For future research, I will use soft plastics and other materials that can help these fabricated objects to become dynamic and shape morphing, which is hard to do with current fabrication methods like 3D printing. Thank you. Research shows that many children are facing the problem of overnutrition or undernutrition, which brings negative effects on their growth. Children need to be more educated about nutrition knowledge to make sure proper nutrition intake. The purpose of my research is to use the special feature of 3D footprinting technology to make snacks for children as educational nutrition supplements to build a connection between teaching nutrition knowledge and eating personalized nutrition snacks. Currently, I'm working on combining studying and eating experience together to enhance the effect of nutrition education. On the app, children can select what kind of food is included in their meal and learn their nutrition categories. Then, the 3D food printer will start working and print a pyramid-shaped snack containing the lucky nutrients from this meal. The sequence, color, and flavor of the snack will resemble the food pyramid to enhance children's understanding of nutrition balance. 
Hello everyone, my name is Jim Pan, and I currently participate in Future Craft Research Lab. The thesis of my research is customized food printing for food allergy sufferers. In daily life, food allergies always cause a great convenience of people, and it usually manifests itself in dietary restrictions and several allergy symptoms caused by the accidental consumption of the food with allergy ingredients. Meanwhile, there are also several people are origin not only not allergic with some kinds of the food, but suddenly allergic at some specific reasons, and it usually causes them cannot enjoy the taste of the new allergy food even they like them before. In this project, I will start with some existing food allergies by not adding substances that make people allergic and attempting to make combinations of the different ingredients to achieve a taste similarity to that of the food with allergy ingredients. In addition, I also consider that printing food is ordered to have similar shapes with the original one, so that members of the allergy sufferers can enjoy the taste experience that they normally cannot enjoy while achieving the best dining experience through visual perception. For further details, an interaction app will be designed towards the allergic sufferers and food printer, so that everyone could customize their printed food according to their personal condition, and even achieve an adjunctive treatment of the food allergy. And that's it. Thank you. The textile industry causes irreparable damage to the environment. It is one of the leading causes of pollution and water waste. Bacterial pigments due to their biodegradability and huge economic potential offer prompts. We can reduce water waste by introducing bacteria directly on fabric and letting it die as it grows. This allows designers to collaborate with bacteria and create random and accidental patterns. The real challenge, however, is to control the growth of bacteria to create well-defined designs. Through this research project, I am hoping to create a design tool that can manipulate bacterial growth and pigment generation by controlling different environmental constraints which will help create well-defined designs. Hello, I am Abir Al-Ansari. My research topic is design tool for customized wearable sensing device using colorimetric analysis. As you know, the normal levels of analytes such as vitamins, minerals, and glucose in a human body are essential to have a good health. Abnormal levels of analytes can cause many health problems. Therefore, my aim is to create a software to allow users to design their own customized wearable device which monitors analytes levels from skin when mixed with sweat in a simple way. Then they can manufacture them using digital fabrication technologies like 3D printer with colorimetric indicators and environmentally friendly materials. The produced wearable device will help users to get direct information about the levels of analytes in their body. And in general, it will be non-invasive, low cost, disposable and customized. Hello everyone, my research theme is taking shape developing geometric learning through tangible user interface. I want to create a tangible gadget inspired from GeoBoard or String Art for geometric learning in early education. People have advanced their abilities to sense and manipulate their physical surroundings, however, majority of these abilities are not used while interacting in today's digital world. So my main goal is to seamlessly link their digital and physical world and allow kids to have more interactive encounters with the product. To achieve this goal, I want to create a gadget that will be expressive and will encourage the kids to explore shape learning. We'll engage multiple senses through sensory interaction, in this case, touch, vision, and auditory for kids to have more memorable interaction. And we'll promote group learning also. The product will have LED lights that serve as pens and conductive rubber will be used as a thread. This will have a learner in advanced mode. In the first mode, LEDs and auditory feedback will guide them to make different shapes through the conductive rubber, while in advanced mode, they will have two feedback loop. At first, LED feedback will be given when they will touch the conducting material with the pins and then auditory feedback after they have made the shape with the conducting material. This will improve the expression and learning through constant feedback loops. My next goal is to redesign this into more expressive product which will also promote social learning. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much Future Crops Project. So I'd like to ask any question and comments. Shitsumon, comment, nado, slide no honi, yoroshiku onegashimasu. If not, I'd like to ask something. The one, one thing is that so thank you for your interesting projects. So the, my question is that what do you think is 
what do you think are the challenges that you need to overcome to spread these ideas to the real society and uh, people, actual kind of the people, users, we start using them in their daily life. So anybody can answer that? Mm -hmm. Maybe I could yep. help answer. So I think one of the um, things that we focus on in Future Crafts is a lot of the process to make um, multiple different opportunities for output. So I think that we could work in collaboration or through teamwork to understand what, um, in which ways these processes could be used in real world outputs. So I think that is something we can do um, in the future. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So yeah, I think that's some kind of a challenges we have that uh, because the the imagine the future that the people are using these kind of the tools in the daily life so they need to kind of uh, understand what in what kind of situations or with in what kind of the circumstances they use they design something they like so how how we can provide that kind of literacy or that kind of the uh, skill, skill sets to the people? Yes, so I think one of the ways that we are trying to do that is through user testing and through um, education methods as well. Mm -hmm. But I believe that um, with the processes being made uh, in our research lab right now, we will work to better integrate it into people's daily lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the key aspect of it will be. So not necessarily something new or something that's unknown, but something that's more um, easy to use and something that's maybe intuitive. So mm -hmm. I think that right now we are researching ways in which that could be um, completed, yes. Thank you. So, YouTube ライブでもコメントいただいてます。今後 5, 5から10年間ぐらいでテクノロジーを利用して料理とか、えー、商品を提供するお店は日本国内でも一気に普及すると考えてますかジャパニーズメンバーとかから何かもしあれば。なりきないかな So, another question is that, so the uh future cross project how do you think in the next five ten years that the, do you think the uh the restaurants or shops that provide their kind of the foods or products using these technologies uh that do, do you think that future will be coming in the next five ten years in japan anybody from the project? Printed food project, how about? あのすいませんあの 3D プリンターフードに関してあの今後は日本で多分あの今はいろいろなんか木とかそういうあのすごい健康的なあの素材新しい素材をあの使ってあのもっとちょっと健康的なフード、えー、と人の健康のためにあのいろいろあの注入して 3D プリンターフードをパーソナルフードとして、まあ、提供できるかなと考えています。はい、ありがとうございました。Thank you very much, Future Cross Project. So, next project. It's Geist. Hello. Welcome to Geist. Sorry. About my lack of effort. In Geist, we use technology to better understand ourselves and the world around us. We are passionate about increasing human potential via technology and we aim to amplify our sense of wonder. This is the makeup of the Geist team. We are excited to be working with two new GID students and we welcome one new PhD student to the family. Welcome aboard everyone.
Thanks to the hard work of Redacted and Lady Dady, we now have new and improved devices for measuring physiological responses. These devices are already being used on a handful of projects with it, nice. including a new experiment in which student volunteers taking an elective course at KMD wear the devices while watching the said courses lectures via Zoom. The instructor also wears the device while teaching the class. The broad goal is to improve the online lecture experience for all parties involved. Instructors of online courses face difficulties when it comes to gauging student reactions to lecture materials for a variety of reasons including but not limited to the inability to see students' faces during the lecture. This project aims to bridge the gap that exists between the teacher and the student in online classroom environments. Emolia by Yifen Zhang. Emolia is an experimental interactive garment which assists the user in expressing their social intentions through motion and color change. Hemodynamic VR by Hiro Yamamura, a method for reducing cyber sickness in virtual reality by a VR headset combined with a functional near-infrared spectroscopy device for measuring hemoglobin. The system works by reducing the field of vision depending on the level of sickness detected in the user. We have been continuously analyzing the data gathered from the boiling mind performance. We aim to publish our new insights into the performance later on. Regarding Smart Ira, we are currently developing open source software and algorithms that can be used across multiple platforms. Please stay tuned. There is of course the ongoing collaboration with Jen's meme, where we are making a new version of the existing smart eyewear. We would love to elaborate further, but unfortunately this project is highly confidential. We apologize for the inconvenience. A collaborative effort between Yan Hei and other members of the Embodied Media Lab at KMD. A project aimed at enabling the detection and induction of goosebumps instigated by aesthetically pleasing or emotionally charged music. Guys. It was involved in the experimental setup and the making of the sensors. recently joined the Cybernetic Being project alongside Kotami Nami Zawa of Embodied Media. This project aims to develop cybernetic avatar technologies to help realize an inclusive society in which we can overcome the physical limitations of our bodies and increase our connectivity to one another. Please see cyberneticbeing.org for more detailed information. Here are our very wonderful partners and collaborators. We are very grateful to be able to work with such talented people every day.
All right, thank you very much for the very nice, cool video from guys. So I think everyone forgot about the questions. <laughs> no question now. So uh, anybody have a question about pro to the project? Thank everyone to enjoy the video. I have I have a yep. big question I always like to ask. Um, a lot of the technology uh, that people are working on now is when we're talking is uh, involves sensors that either the need to be on the body or close to uh, people participating. When do you envision a world or technology where um, sensing is completely ambient and uh, people lose control over it? So anybody from the project? Oh, nobody? Echo Sensei also wants to know. Although we see it as a, sorry, I can't turn my webcam on right now. Um, although that is kind of a, a nice goal that we should strive through. Um, just knowing from personal experience with the sensors we have now, um, even the kind of um, physical sensors haven't been perfected yet, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna probably take at least until we get that sort of sorted out before we can sort of evolve to the kind of next level of physiological sensing. Does that make sense? Yeah, but do you have any idea speculatively of when that's going to happen? Because there's already a lot of like facial technology that could be considered ambient sensing, like with cameras that are in cities and whatnot. And uh, when software or algorithms are able to get different data just from video, um, I, I believe ambient sensing is going to become a huge security issue and a, and a, and a wonderful opportunity for these types of projects. So. Um, my, my question was if there was any timeline for when that was going to happen. Uh, if there's the, if you haven't explored that, that's fine as well. Or maybe Kai Sensei wants to answer. Yeah, maybe, maybe he does. Yeah, unfortunately for me personally, I, I don't have an answer to that since I've mostly worked with the sort of EDA and heart rate sensors. And I, I don't have much experience with facial recognition or anything like that. Although I know there's something maybe going on with one of the PhD students in that area. But um, yeah, I guess some of that technology when, when you think about it, already does exist, uh, at least facial recognition. So in that case, some sense of ambience, sorry, my cat is attacking the keyboard. Um, some form of ambient sensing, I guess, already does exist. Um, so I guess to sort of not answer your question. Um, yeah, I guess we'll see with how I, I don't have an answer for exactly when, except that it's half there and then hopefully the, the rest will come soon. And do you think that it's gonna be a good thing or something that we should be a little bit more uh, um, cautious about? Yeah, I mean, that's always the thing with, it's kind of a cliche answer that everybody gives from Ray Kurzweil to um, I guess Bitcoin entrepreneurs that with every sort of new piece of technology, you know, there's all these benefits that come, but then there's always all these, um, negative things that come as well. The internet is a great example. Social media is a great example. So I think it's inevitable that there will be um, negative consequences. And of course, there's always people out there with nefarious kind of um, motives. It's just, you know, we, we have, you know, sociopaths all over the place in our world, unfortunately. Um, but I guess we don't think it should hold us back in terms of developing this kind of technology. Um, it's just kind of an inevitable thing. That's just part of humanity. But, and it is very unfortunate. So the best you can do is kind of, um, I guess on the government level, there's regulations. Um, we can always sort of make our intentions clear and sort of show people the sort of positive ways to use these things. And hopefully that will catch on more so than these kind of nefarious and negative ones. Okay, thank you. Yep, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So it's time to have a short break. So, yep. So we have five minutes short break until 2.25. So yeah, then we will continue the second half of the, our plenary meeting. Yeah, great presentations, everybody. Thank you so far. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. See you in five minutes.
Okay, so I hope you guys all enjoyed your break. I will be taking the second half. Uh, so, by the way, my name is Jihiro. I'm also an assistant professor um, at KMD. So let's start our second round of um, Real Projects presentations and we'll start with global education. <laughs> Hello everyone, this is Global Education. We aim to nurture global citizens who can design and contribute to the future global society. To achieve our vision, we conduct three missions. First one is to design a sustainable and innovative program for global citizens. Second mission is foster global mindset to face global issues. Our third mission is to facilitate transformative learning and cross-cultural engagement for young generations on a global scale. Our core ideas are global, connecting cultures, technology, utilizing tools, and education, teaching, and learning. Let's take a look at our sub-projects. They are categorized into four types. This time, four of our sub-projects have brought new updates. The Global Workshop Project is dedicated to raise the global awareness towards sustainable development by having a real session with the high school students. And we had the online new experience under the COVID-19 situation, which gave us new inspiration. The IN360 project is trying to show the chance and inspire the motivation for new careers to the kids who come from developing areas. We record and send the 360 video to the field so that the kids can see the real work site and what it's like to do the job. Blue Light is the project that combines the game with learning experience. And in recent research, we worked together with the Smart News project and set up a new game to help distinguish the authenticity of the news we see in our daily life. The EBA project is included in a university consortium for evidence-based approach designed to solve emergency policy issues in Asia. This is Global Workshop. Over the course of six years, over 600 grade 10 students at Fujimigaoka High School have participated in Global Workshop, which from 2020 we're holding online. Our aim is to prepare students to be active global citizens in a rapidly changing world. For that, we aim to empower students to be globally competent through these three processes. To raise students' global awareness, build their global skills, and encourage them to take global actions. Being aware of global issues. For the first two sessions, students are introduced to SDG's topic by peer learning. This enables them to explore freely, self-evaluate their understanding, and structure their knowledge to communicate the information to peers. Through activities like creating dream city collages, students explored further on how the global issues are interrelated with their life and widened their perspective by knowing others' dream future. Thinking and communicating effectively across culture. Through activities such as drawing an action roadmap, allow students to imagine their preferable future and reflect back on how they act now. Taking global action. In our last three sessions in 2020 to 21, students worked on their final project, Global Awareness Day, We Are the Ocean. Students designed campaign visuals for ocean conservation organizations. They were able to touch upon issues from plastic pollution in the ocean to overfishing and their causes. Here are some of their outcomes. They made animations, posters, and other marketing packages. Students develop their digital literacy skill through the online workshop. However, there still is a room for improvement. We would like to challenge and enhance online intimacy with students through engaging them to physically make a prototype and so on. Hello, we are in 360, a sub-project under global education related to career inspiration. Children in rural areas tend to have limited access to information and less variety of role models. We would like to give children alternative source of inspiration to help them see the world from a wider perspective and be motivated to build their own dream by exposing them to a variety of professions and its impact to the society. Through career stories in 360 degree video, children can experience an actual working atmosphere and feel the passion of the role model. 
We are building a platform and create a diverse community that inter-influences each other. Our contents are created by a unique formation of people who work in the field and university students through our Job Digital Storytelling Workshop. We have collaborated with role models and co-creators in Indonesia, Japan, and Vietnam. Over the past few years, we have delivered career exploration activities to children in Indonesia and Vietnam with the help of local parents and teachers as their mentor. Based on the finding from career exploration activities that we did in Indonesia and Vietnam, we designed a three-phase learning module that allows children to acquire information, internalize their learning, and do some challenges to familiarize themselves with the profession. In the time of COVID-19 pandemic, with the help of our local partner, we installed a learning corner in Pangluan Village in Indonesia for two weeks. We have 34 children aged 10 to 13 visited our corner and joined the learning activities. Here are some of the learning outcomes from the activity. As a result, 80% of the children came back to our corner to try the activity again. From the questionnaire, we found that they enjoyed the activities and voiced desire to share what they learned with their friends. We are currently improving the learning module to run another session this June. If you are interested in creating and sharing inspiring stories for the future of children in the rural areas, do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you! Blue Light is a category of projects under Global Education, a research group in the Graduate School of Media Design, KU University. In Blue Light, we explore the potential of games to create unique experiences and inspire learning. Today I'd like to share updates about our collaboration project with Smart News. Originally inspired by Brain Company, a card game about fake news created in 2019, To Share or Not to Share is a digital experience which simulates a social media environment. Players are able to share pieces of news with different levels of privacy, and depending on the reliability of the news shared, they earn or lose followers. The calculation of the number of followers is based on social media algorithms. If many players share a piece of news, the impact on the number of followers will be bigger, both when losing or earning new followers. Professors and teachers have access to the information shared by the players. With a special dashboard, they're able to keep track on the motivations and the share rate of information. The results for the initial tests of the system, as well as the iteration cycles of the design, were posted in two different publications. The first one was published in Access 2020, December last year. The most recent publication was done in CSEDU 2021, on last April. Currently, To Share or Not To Share will be applied in a digital media literacy course in partnership with Hiroshima University. More than 2,000 undergraduate students are expected to join the sessions. We're looking forward to share the findings from the sessions in the near future, both looking at it as a game-based approach for media literacy learning and as a tool to collect data related to sharing behaviors online. Thank you for watching. The University Consortium for Evidence-Based Approach to Emerging Issues in Asia, EBA, it's a university consortium with nine different institutions from seven different countries in Asia. EBA was designed to solve emerging policy issues in Asia. Started in 2012, the main three areas of EBA are environment and energy, health and public health, disaster prevention and security. One of the main activities from the EBA program are fieldworks. Those fieldworks are jointly designed by the participating universities, and they incentivize practical action and promote cultural exchange. Since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, the fieldwork activities have been put into a halt. Currently, we are working to redesign eBay fieldwork activities for remote participation. While those global events served as a trigger for this new design, we believe that the virtual remote fieldwork activities should be a new way to experience the field. With this in mind, we want to develop a new experience for fieldwork participants and fieldwork designers. We are working with immersive technology, such as virtual reality, 360 videos, and spatial audio. Considering two types of activities, qualitative-focused fieldworks and quantitative-focused fieldworks, we're focusing on experiences utilizing hotspots for immersive navigation with 360 video content, as well as data measurement and data visualization inside a virtual reality environment. 
currently working with Oculus Quest 2 for the VR development, as well as Unity with 360 video and spatial audio. While WeBA is an ongoing project, a new phase of fieldwork design is just starting. An initial fieldwork is set to happen in summer 2021 in Japan. We're looking forward to it to prepare for the initial remote design and initial testers. Thank you for watching. Okay, thank you very much, Global Education. So we do have questions for you written on slide two. Um, what are good points about using 360 video for education environment for younger ages? Does anyone want to elaborate on this? Uh, I will try to answer that question. Thank you so much for the question. Um, in, in general, I think 360 video can help students to understand special things better. For example, for geography class and uh, things that we, uh, that would help if they are actually in the locations. Uh, for my um, project specifically, uh, we use 360 video so that they are able to experience the place as if they are in the location. And another thing that is interesting from 360 video is because the viewer is the one who controls the view. I think it's also very good for self-study so that everyone would have would have um, different learning experience through 360 video, even for uh, kids. Uh, yeah, hmm. I hope that answered the question. Yeah, uh, there's actually a follow up a follow up question on this. Um, did workshop participants change anything, or like prior and after mm -hmm. attending the workshop? Do you, what kind? Were there any changes that you felt? Um, I think the change will be from the information itself, but also um, because it pro uh, I would, um, it could be because it's something new for them as well. Uh, they are interested in the video itself and keep coming back to the corner that we set up in the village. So that's one thing. And also, it's not through uh, my research, but uh, from my experience back then, uh, visiting a small islands in Indonesia, uh, some of the kids uh, doesn't know the size of airplane because they've never seen airplane in their real life. And probably if they don't leave the island ever, they won't know um, how big an airplane is uh, or how big a building can be. So that's something that uh, could add, I think, for uh, the kids in um, developing areas. Um, maybe someone wants to take that question for the global workshops for Hujimigaoka, perhaps? Anyone in charge of the Hujimigaoka workshops? No? Yes. Um. Sorry. What What was the question again? I'm sorry. Um. How How were your workshops? For, um. What Um. How were your participants changed before and after attending the workshops? Perhaps. Um. I guess yes. They are um aware of the um global issues and SDGs. But um after the workshops, they would um actually like think um what the issues are together with um with their um, peers and they would also um, like create um, like prototypes with um, their hands and present them um, to their peers as well. So in that sense, I guess um, they would have more um, um, understanding towards those issues. Hey, thank you very much. Hi everyone, this is Shina, an M1 student from Real Project Itoma, started in April 2020. Today, I want to briefly introduce you what is Itoma. Then we will give more information about our five sub-projects. Itoma is originated from the word kanka, 
which means margin, leisure, spare time, and luxury. The resting time doesn't necessarily just mean lying down. It can also mean everything that makes you feel vibrant, joy that gives you the liveness to going on. Economically speaking, the book Luxury and Capitalism states that expenses on luxury is higher than what we spend on our necessities. Hence, luxury is important. Why Itoma? We believe that Itoma supports the enrichment of people's lives, and our project mission is to figure out how might we be able to incorporate the moment of Itoma into our lives. Currently, we have 25 members under Chihiro Sun's guidance. To be specific on what we're actually doing, we have weekly readings to gain the logic of service design. Then we apply what we learned into various contexts of our five subprojects. There are accessing cultural experience project, shopping mall project, airport project, aging community project, and soundscape project. Next. Our team members will give more details of each project. The first subproject that we are going to introduce is accessing cultural experience. It is a joint project with King's College London, and it started last April. We are sponsored by King's Together Fund and Keio University Global Research Institute. We currently have twelve members, welcoming two new members this spring from the GID program. In the situation where COVID-19 restricts the physical access to cultural institutions, we are exploring how we can design and deliver cultural experience that can work for ordinary people. In our previous project activities, we held workshops both in London and Tokyo. In this project, we usually start by conducting several ethnography research in our interested field, such as the museums and other public areas, followed by persona making and design skits. From here, we have expanded the project activities into different project ideas. We have four ongoing ideas: a project that designs a service ecosystem to enable sustainable art offering at airports; a surprise box project that lets you exchange your secret spot with a stranger through a subscription box service; take-home exhibition that enhances the storytelling in museums; and sonity project. They aim to connect the outlanders and the local inhabitants through encouraging music co-creation in the communities. As for future plans, we will continue cultivating the ideas for further implementation to our desired context. Thank you. This is the Kasugai Shopping Mall project. We're designing an integrated life-supporting service for a new shopping mall in Kasugai City, Aichi Prefecture. We aim to build a harmonious ecosystem that contributes to the well-being of local communities. Sponsored by Dial House, this project currently has five members: two M2 and three M1 students, and a specially appointed professor of KMD, Keiko Ihara, as a co-researcher on the project. Kasugai Gogo is a local mobility as a service construction project with stakeholders including the shopping mall, tourism association, and chamber of commerce. We also launched an app called Kasugai Gogo for delivery, mobility sharing, and centralized information management. To this date, we've conducted ethnography research and fieldwork to identify the mental models of Kasugai residents. After reviewing existing mobility services on the market, we've been exploring delivery and mobility sharing solutions that satisfy the well-being needs in the area. For our future plan, we're working towards four directions. We will keep refining the detailed functions of the Kasugai Gogo app and plan to launch novel services to improve the local parenting environment, map out tourism routes to encourage exploring the city's charm, and pass on memorable stories from generations. Through service design, we aim to bring the uniqueness of Kasugai onto the next level and to make it a more livable community with a sense of well-being. Hello, we are the Airport Project. Our project is about discovering opportunities for design in an airport to enhance airport experiences. This is a project started in October 2019, collaborating with DS Innovation as well as KMD's Network Media project. Here are the current 15 project members. The main goal of this project is to make Haneda Airport to be the world's best airport. To do so, we aim to design from perspectives that are not just about convenience, but rather about enjoyment. This year, we designed for moving. 
Starting by conducting ethnography research at major transportation hubs, we've gradually cultivated our design ideas through the process shown below. Currently, we have five projects working in progress, targeting diverse users and their needs. Airway Cart and Airport Map support airport explorers to spend their time in their own way by designing movable information service and maps for various goals. Question Categorization Project and Anxious Passengers Project aim at creating soothing experiences using Rapport and Interactive Emotional Box. Also, we have the Ticket Redesign Project that hopes to add emotional value to the boarding pass and make it as a memorial. For the future plan, we will further develop these ideas and prove the values they can provide. Hope our efforts will contribute to the passengers' well-being in their Haneda Airport experiences. That will be all from us. Thank you. Hello, we are the Aging 20 project. Our project started in January 2021. Now we have six group members and three collaborators working closely with us. Our goal is to investigate the needs and issues of the elderly community in Yonamoto Danchi and aim to design service that can provide a sustainable well-being lifestyle for the elderly living there. After ethnography research and several rounds of ideation, we have discovered two possible designs that could help values to elderly in different contexts, co-creating art with physical and digital tools, and planning growing kids, aiming to deliver a healthy and happy lifestyle to the elderly. Three collaborators provided us the opportunity to become more familiar with the community. Up to now, we have been to a number of field works, and we participate in community activities to observe mental models of the elderly. Currently, the elderly community would like to create a free news magazine that everyone can contribute by themselves. We act as their supporter and design a physical toolkit that can provide resources to resolve the breakdowns they might have when designing newspaper without the convenience of digital devices and internet. Next step, we will continually iterate our prototypes according to the issue plan of the newspaper. We also have other design plans that aim to make a sustainable well-being ecosystem in the aging community project. And thank you for listening to us. Welcome to our yearbook project. In this project, we are researching based on the new hairball device developed by NEC Corporation. This project is in collaboration with Network Media and supported by DS Innovation. We aim to inspect the potential of soundscapes through an interactive experience with our key device. Now, we have proposed a new service concept named Monomilsan. It's an application that offers immersive audio work experience. Monomilsan will guide visitors through a detour with the local narrators that know them best they will tell you all about the areas through the earphones. And we try to make visitors feel easier to encounter interesting places and initiate conversation with local people. Here is our concept video. To design on the meal sound, we firstly proposed two system functions for the visitor side. And now we are designing the system for the local narrator side, and we will further test its value in use. That's all, and thank you for your time. Okay, thank you very much, Itoma Project. So we do have questions um, specific for the, for the airport project. What will be the future of airport in the post pandemic? Anyone? Yes, I think I can take this question. Thank you, Masa Sensei, for asking us the um, future vision of airport. Actually, we have discussed this topic in our um, daily research, and we think in a post-pandemic society, people probably will have more needs um, to, for long-distance travel, and maybe they will um, travel more for leisure uh, rather than for their work. 
So we think in the future, um, the airport might be a very common transportation tool for normal people. It will be look more like the um, travel, uh, no, um, uh, train station or the bus station um, in our um, current society. So it will be a more um, efficient way of travel. So that is um, how we picture the future airport. Okay, thank you. We have one more question for the shopping mall project. Um, what do you need to take care of and consider when applying your services to other shopping malls outside Kasugai? Anyone? Um, um, yes, uh, I, I think I can take this question. Um, currently, uh, we are working on four di uh, directions uh, as we were introduced in the videos. Um, uh, so we, uh, we, first of all, we met about the whole stakeholder maps, uh, we, uh, which was su uh, super complicated uh, maps. And so we are just looking for um, some really, um, uh, really, Sewer uh, breakdown for the uh, for this map uh, in the, in this map and uh, we are uh, uh, and we are working on it and so uh, for other shopping mall outside the Kasugai, uh we would like to um, consider more and doing more uh, user test and uh, doing uh, the value validations uh, after uh, our pro our prototyping and let's see what we got uh, in the future yes. I think that's it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, so I guess, oh, I see. I guess what <laughs> my background is reversed, I guess. I'm so sorry. Okay, so <laughs> let's, I think we can go on to the next project. Thank you very much, Itoma. So let's move on to network media. Let me introduce the Network Media Project. These are our members at Network Media. We have members from diverse backgrounds, engineering, visual arts, music, and many more. We welcomed two new members this spring. We now have 40 members, including 11 masters. Our project holds four missions. Firstly, we strive to make the internet better. Secondly, connect everything to the internet. Thirdly, we want to define and come up with new ways of utilizing the big data from the ICT. Lastly, we need to develop a safe, secured internet infrastructure with more concerned but less worried about privacy issues. These are our partnering entities. Let me introduce some of our partners. Wide Project as an internet research organization. Information Bank Consortium, the organizer of the development of information banks. KO Cyber Security Research Center, an institution working on education. One of our projects is on information banking. We run a consortium in alliance with KMD, Tokyo University, and other corporations. Here we discuss the government regulations and development of information banks as a channel for building a system for personal data utilization. SDM is a working project from WIDE. It aims to develop new ways of expressing sound using internet technologies. Details and sub-projects will be talked about later. ここからはネットワークメディアにおけるサイバーセキュリティ研究センターの一員として社会基盤となったインターネットでの活動をいかに安心安全なものにできるのかするのかということをミッションに取り組みを行っております。この取り組みでは技術的にどのような設計ティ対策を行っていくのかということだけではなく組織運営や継続的な管理運用また社会制度法制度について実際に様々な企業との共同研究や実社会での インターネットでは既存コンテンツやフィッシングが多く存在しており日々巧妙なものになっています 
一世代前では URL にある鍵マークがあるかどうかで判断すると言われておりましたが、現在では手軽に暗号化できる環境から、ほとんどのフィッシングサイトでも鍵マークがつくようになっています。このように現在のブラウザ上での鍵マークは単に暗号化されているということを証明するものであり、接続先が信頼できるというものであるかを示しているわけではありません。ここで現在のウェブブラウザにおける信頼構造をデザインし直し、ユーザーが接続先が安全であるかどうかを判断することが可能となるオンライントラストの設計を行っております。二つ目はデジタルアイデンティティの管理運用についてです。インターネットのサービスを利用するために様々なアカウントを持っていると思いますが、これらは日々漏えいし不正利用されているのが現状です。この問題はユーザーが簡単なパスワードに設定しているや、使い回していることだけではなく、デジタルアイデンティティを管理している側についても、パスワード以外の認証方法は提供できていない、不正ログインを検出できていないなどの問題があります。ここで、ユーザー開発者、運用者にとって、シンプルで使いやすい実践的な認証認可システムを実現するための管理プラットフォームの体系化について取り組んでおります。我々の研究活動の詳細については、慶応義塾大学サイバー文明研究センターからご覧ください。Information Bank is a social system that enables the management and distribution of information based on the consent of the individual by depositing personal data in a trusted organization such as a bank. Since 2014, our project has operated the Industry Academia Consortium. As a result, the realization of the Information Bank b e c o m e an important policy for the government's data utilization. We have carried out research and development of dissemination and enlightenment activities from the viewpoint of technology, policy, and social acceptability at Information Bank Consortium. From 2018, we started a research project with the support of JST Listics on how to utilize data by data portability established by GDPR. Conducting research and development to realize a user centered distribution ecosystem of comprehensive and integrated personal information, CIPI. We launched Call for Myself and started Ikinium with the aim of developing and providing open source software that helps individuals acquire and manage their personal data. This research helps individuals make decisions when providing their data to service providers in order to utilize personal information on their own. This study believes that personal data, which is currently used primarily for marketing, should be used to update the owner's own life in society. I'm studying how to obtain consent for the handling of privacy data by allowing users to understand and agree on the risks, benefits for using icons. I aim to promote the utilization of personal information. To ensure that users can use the Internet in the right ways, the individual networks that compose the Internet must be properly operated and managed. For the stable operation of the network, knowledge of related technologies is essential, and expertise and the ability to make decisions to deal with different situations and incidents. However, There have been many cases of network failures due to human errors. Sometimes these failures had a spreading effect on other networks. So, improving network operational technologies of respective network operators is essential for the Internet as a whole. The use of the Internet, including social networking services, is increasing in Bangladesh. And the challenge is to improve operational technologies to provide stable services. However, it is difficult for individual organizations to overcome this challenge due to a lack of educational opportunities, an outflow of skilled technicians, and rigid operations. Therefore, I'm studying the possibility of utilizing the network operators group as a field for technology transfer and knowledge creation to improve. The operational technologies of the region. BDNOG, the NOG of Bangladesh, was established by volunteers in 2013 and has worked to build a better internet environment in Bangladesh. I have been involved with BDNOG since its first meeting. My study aims to identify what kind of activities will contribute to improving 
the operational technologies of the telecommunication operators in Bangladesh, with the target community as BDNOG. Internet native audiovisual services are developing rapidly. Among these services, object based audiovisual services are gaining importance. In 2014, Software Defined Media, SDM, was established as a one of working group of wide project to target new research areas in markets involving object based digital media and internet by design audiovisual environments. Currently, the coronavirus is changing people's lives and communication methods on a daily basis, and in particular, remote communication such as remote work, remote meetings, online classes, and online concerts is increasing, and related networks and communication technologies are also developing. One of targeted remote distribution is music events. SDM has an environment in which the metadata of the performers and instruments, as well as the information of the content transmitted through SNS, can be handled dynamically. In 2015, KMD and SDM started a research tangible sound to design a new musical experience with controlling 3D sound objects in a real space. In this research, as remote communication is expected to be the main means of communication, even after the coronavirus is resolved, we will apply the technology of remote communication and the new sound expression by tangible sound to create more realistic remote communication between people and new communication methods using sound. We also aim to create a new viewing experience in the entertainment field and an online interactive sound experience. On 7th November, 2014, Peppa came into my family and we started living with. But we have many hurdles there are. We have to overcome many hurdles to live together. For robots to live in human society, we need to make new social design. For example, no rules for pets, mobile phone or alcohol, existed at first, but through a process of trial and error, we were able to build a new society. I think the same of robots. In a social context, robots have come into our human world, acquiring a status as a kind of life home. Thinking about human-robot relationships often raises discussions about human controlling robots and whether one day human will be ruled by robots. But rather than humans or robots being above or below one another, I believe we share the same status. We create a new social design for humans and robots can live together. Okay, any questions from anybody? If not, I don't see any on slide do nor on YouTube. Any questions from Keiko? Maji. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you for giving me the opportunity to ask questions to the team. Um, I have a question to robot team. I mean, maybe namely Tomomi-san. I really like your research and um, to, uh, to find out some new relationship, new way uh, to accept robot into the society. Would you please explain a little bit more about your ideal um, relationship to, uh, between the robots and human being and robots and the society to be? So what's, um, I know that there's so many um, obstacles to, to make it into your family, but what, what exactly you are trying to see? And I ask? えっと、
あ人の関係性のリソーっていう質問で大丈夫そうそうそうそうあはい,い,い,いありがとうございます、はい、えっと少しディテールに喋るって言われた<笑>えっと私の理想像は、えっと、まず人と人と,もとかの関係と同じようにこう主従関係っていう一つの関係性があると思っていてその他にもこう弱いロボットを助けるみたいな関係性があると思っていてで3つ目に私が提案したいのは、えっと、ロボットと人間が対等な立場にいるという関係性です。あのロボットの対等、まあ対等といっても多分異なるものなので対等っていうのは難しいと思うんだけど、例えばそのほロボットがこうあるべきみたいなあの法律みたいのができるんですかね。だとするとそのロボットって例えば国籍みたいの持つんですかね。えっ、ー、とそう,そうですね。あの私のなんだろう根本的にある。哲学みたいなところは今ちょっと人間だけ特別扱いされてしまっているというところにとても違和感を感じていてでその人間中心の社会を壊したいっていう強い哲学がありますでえっとそれっていうのはえっと法律も作っ法律っていうのは結構人間が特別に扱われている法律ででこれまでの研究っていうのはえっと、ロボットをその人間の地位に持ってくるっていうところをメインに扱われてる研究が多かったんですけれども私の研究では人とロボットはこうどっちかっていうと人間がこうロボットの地位に行くというかそんな人間って特別なものだっけっていうところの問いかけからスタートしたいなと思っていますありがとうございます私はアシモフの大ファンなので素敵な世界ができることを期待していますありがとうございますはい、ネットワークメディアの皆さんありがとうございました。ペパス君が微妙に見切れてるのが残念ですね。はい、じゃあ次に行きたいと思います。じゃあプレイです。Welcome to Play Project. We are a group of people who are playful. Magical and artful thinkers. We want to have a much better world for the post pandemic future. We live in a physical reality, but blended with a hybrid virtual reality. In our minds, we also have dreams and we live in an imaginary world as well. So, how can we combine these three different worlds? We use The power of dream driven design. It has five steps. The first step is to build your capacity to become super curious and explorer of the world. Second, we use the power of imagination to envision our dream future. Then, we will backcast today. And think about what can we do today so that we can act towards our dream future. In doing so, we use the power of stories. Stories are very important, and this is how we remember our incidents and important moments in our everyday life. And finally, we also want to be very creative, so we use the power of Artful and playful expressions. So, in this presentation, our students will provide you insightful, hopefully, our future of X of different topics. Hi, everyone. I'm Tai. My project is about the future of shopping in play. In the future, No longer you will need to go to the store for shopping, and instead, the store will send the merchandise to you and you can get information about this good. Then, you can place an order and buy it. People transform all the merchandise to an electronic date. In the other world, Shopping Center will become a digital store. There are various kinds of goods here. 
and each product has their own digital date and the serial tour. The product information can be displayed remotely. This is a new shopping with style with a digital store, electronic date, and a holographic display. Thank you. My name is Su Chun. I am one of the members in Play Project. I will briefly introduce my research. First of all, I'd like to ask that have you ever thought about how noise will change in your life in the future? In fact, in the pounding atmosphere of urban areas, machines or human activities have created today such a large variety of noise. So literally, noise has a negative effect on people. However, heavy noise might be important to feel considered more maybe like casual communication or more like empathic connection among the people. My project therefore aims to design the audio-visual experience show with the interactive devices that allow noise to be visualized and displayed. Turning what has previously been a source of social anxiety into a form of art or entertainment form. Let the noise of the coming age be assigned. Also, I intend to design noise interactive game to break the stereotype of noise and let people feel aesthetic and happy in the future during this semester. So that's almost for my introduction. Thanks for listening. Hi, hello everyone. My name is Min Tianqian, and what I want to do is the future of photography. It means augmenting the explanations of photographers. And I will record and reproduce the physical feelings of photographers and attach the sense state to the photo after design so that the viewer can better understand the mood of the photographer and the photo itself. And through the processing and design of the photos, the breathing, heartbeat, and the environmental temperature of the photographers will be reproduced. That's all. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Rua O'Brien Simpson, and today I'm going to talk to you about the future of storytelling and communication. So my project is about at immersive at-home storytelling using scent. So scent is a sense with a powerful connection to our memories and emotions that we often don't utilize in storytelling. Through integrating scent into the stories we tell, what kinds of narratives and experiences could we explore that we couldn't before? Is there a story that could only be told with scent, like ones that only a picture, film, or piece of music can? Through my research, I hope to explore how both a user's experience and immersion is affected, and also how a writer can expand their creative thinking and storytelling potential through utilizing scent. Thank you very much. The future of podcast. In the past few decades, the spirit of digital information has brought tremendous changes to people's social life. In particular, the younger generation is preferred to making friends online. However, even in the information age, people still need to enjoy local communities to obtain the new resources. So I want to design a new experience of playing board games. The purpose is add the elements of personal body sensation to the game. And through this improvement, I want to break the traditional brick board game can only stay in a physical entity and bring the game more possible. Many people pay more attention to manage their nutrition, but it's quite difficult to manage these nutritional ingredients for each meal. And even if people use nutrition application, it's inconvenient to read the nutrition dates or graph from application, and they tend to give up. So I designed the nutrition tracking breast dates, which would record the nutrition dates for users. They can check the changes of nutritional ingredients simply by color change and vibration of these breast dates. As you can see in this picture, the different color butterflies show the different kinds of nutrition, and their color will have changes to show the user the nutrition information when they pick up something or eat something. Hello 
everyone, my project is about future of things. Objects in the future may have no shape, however there will always be the need for communication. In the future I tend to imagine communication with objects will be more fun and engaging. It won't be limited to us conversing with each other, but objects too will interact with one another as well. Since it is within our psychology to unconsciously personify things around us, I believe that it is needed to better our mental health. Will that communication be more through light, however, through touch, gestures, movement? This project is interested in how to enhance the interaction between object to object as well as a human to object in a playful way while raising awareness about their general impact uh, by using the power of animation and storytelling. Currently, I am um, trying it out in my room, in my indoor space, trying of uh, different scenarios, scenarios within storytelling of how I could make objects speak to one another as well as to me what language would they use lots of questions thank you very much hi everyone i'm keo i'm focusing on the future of communication and trying to improve people's online interactive experience through digital devil a digital devil is a projection of ourselves in the virtual world it can have the exact same appearance as us, also can be design of your preference. In my dream future, our digital double will be given the same personality as we do. With digital double, we can maintain a perfect appearance during the online communication. It can also enrich the chat experience by giving interactive feedback. Digital double enables us to create a realistic communication scenarios. Don't forget, it could be your assistant in the virtual world. They can talk with people just like you. I hope I can explore more features of digital doubles and optimize our video chat experience. Thank you. Hope you like my virtual avatar. I hope you enjoyed student presentation that we explore different types of our dream future. We're currently building a dream-driven design community. If you're interested in envisioning the future for a much better planet, please join us. Okay, thank you very much. Play project. So we do have a question about the nutrition wearable devices. Um, how the how does it detect, or do you think that will could be applied to other daily products? So who would want to talk more about the nutrition bracelet? Yeah, for the nutrition bracelet, if you get more too much nutrition, the this bracelet will show the light to remind you you should eat uh, it less, and uh, the uh, it has the vibration. So uh, if uh, if you eat too much, uh, the 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 bracelet will also have some uh, vibration to. Uh, to remind you the nutrition challenge for the users. Yeah. Okay, so um, how do you think that this can be applied to other daily products, perhaps? Mm. Uh. Maybe it's a difficult question. You can keep continuing to think about it and answer later too. Yeah, yeah I think I, okay. I can't answer this question. It's okay. Now. Okay, um, question for Keo. Hello. Um, did you design and code the digital character by yourself? Uh, no, I'm using a software right now. <laughs> Well, everyone uses some kind of a software. <laughs> yeah, 
because um, at first I don't know that uh, recently this software uh, has has been uh, working on this uh, um, this research. So um, after I did my uh, I did uh, some research about these things, and I found that this software is exactly the same as what I want to do. So I want to explore more information about this software um, to help with my uh, research. Um, I, I can send, um, send the link, the download link to everyone. Okay, great. Um, a very general question for all members of the play. Where do you draw your inspirations from? Um, from, um, <laughs> I, I'm not sure, maybe, um, because we, we, we use the Zoom every day and I find some people may don't uh, want to show their face and uh, sometimes. So, uh, if we have a virtual after for everyone to, um, express uh, their emotion and show their um, characteristic. Um, maybe we, we will um, have a more um, leisure time about the FaceTime uh, experience. Okay, thank you very much, Play Project. Let's move on to Polypuro. <laughs> ポリシープロジェクトです。よろしくお願いします。本日はこのような流れで発表します。それではまずポリシープロジェクトについて簡単にご紹介します。ポリシープロジェクトとは新たな情報社会を築くための産学連携プロジェクトです。教育、音楽
事業化を目指します。最後に3つ目は、イベント開催と共同カリキュラムの開発を行います。具体的に、企業教育と連動したピッチイベントの開催、共同カリキュラムの開発を行います。ベンチャー企業と学生をつなぐインターン紹介なども行う予定です。プロジェクトの進歩状況と今後の未来についてです。活動内容として取り組みの一つで、えー、若手企業家をゲストに迎え、オンラインでの企業相談や企業の経験談や事業内容について聞くことができるイベント、オンラインテレコヤを開催しています。2021年はすでに4回行っており、今後も月1回のペースで行ってまいります。最後に、プロジェクトのスポンサーと学生がやってきたことを発表します。学生がやってきたことは、主にオンラインテラコヤのイベントの運営と議事録の作成を行いました。スポンサー企業は以下の企業となっております。これで発表終わります。それではここから引き続きまして、M2 の漆畑がシッププロジェクトについてお送りします。このシッププロジェクトとは、一般社団法人シップ協議会が中心として行われている取り組みですが、その中でもメインとなる滝芝エリアで行われております、シティテックにフォーカスを当てて、今回はご紹介させていただきます。今のような世の中、世界的に AI や IoT、ビッグデータなどを活用した先進技術による都市開発が進んでおります。そのような中、日本でもスーパーシティ構想という第4次産業革命を体現させる都市計画を政府が発表しております。都市インフラから情報インフラまで、統合的に実装する都市モデルを開発しようという動きです。こういった背景から、シップ協議会はシティテック委員会を発足させロボット AI IoT 5G8K といった先端技術を集積させた都市を東京竹芝に作り合わせて世界に示していこうというプロジェクトを実施しています実験ではなく実装分散ではなく集中そのような都市モデルを日本および海外へと展開することも視野に入れた活動を進めています具体的にはドローンを使用した配送や街中デジタルアートスマートモビリティなどがありますその中で象徴的なのが7月に行われるチョモロちょっと先の面白い未来を表す言葉でその体験ができるイベントを東京竹芝エリアで開催しますここでは e スポーツからアニメオライミュージックライブなど次々に誕生するポップカルチャーやライフスタイルを変えていく最先端のテクノロジーをご紹介する予定です。今、ここ、東京・竹芝エリアは、日本が世界に誇る新しい文化や産業の発信地になろうとしています。官、民、学が連携して、デジタルかけるコンテンツのエネルギーを集結し、チョモロをはじめ、世界に誇れる魅力的な日本の姿を次々とこの力創造し発信していきますこちらは本年2021年7月3日土曜日と4日日曜日に東京ポートシティ竹芝まちづくりプラザで行われる予定です現在の進捗状況としては毎週木曜日などに行われているプロジェクト委員会で推進をしておりましてスポンサーとして東急不動産様や吉本興業様、ソフトバンク様などについていただいております。また、このプロジェクトは2019年から開始した新しいもので、昨年は突然のコロナ禍で実施したという反省を踏まえまして、今回は COVID-19 の感染対策を万全にした状況でのハイブリッド開催を目指しております。さらに、そこから派生したプロジェクトとしては、イノベーションシティ連携プロジェクト。竹芝のようなポテンシャルを持つ地方都市として、例えば札幌、そして AI や IoT、ビッグデータなどを手掛けるスタートアップを持つ地方都市としては、例えば福岡があります
どちらもちょもろと同じような取り組みを行っている部分もありそこに対しての再現性や転用性持続可能性などを学術的に分析し相互連携の可能性や他地域の展開などの可能性を研究しております。Okay, thank you very much, Poripuro san. Any questions or comments for them?、Um, online Terakoya, good I think, do you know, event or conate iru no deska? Tono koto des. Tonota ka irasha i maska? Ah, hi, kota imas. オンライン寺子屋に関してなんですけど、起業した経験がある方だとか、そういった、えっとまあ、知見のある方を呼んで、オンライン上で、えっと、学生向け、起業した学生向けに、えっとまあ、そういうような起業をするためにはどうしたらいいかみたいな講座を行っているということをしています。はい、ありがとうございます。えー、ともう一つ、チョモロのプロジェクトはどのように研究にすることを考えていますかと、まあ、いろいろ実施なさってると思うんですけれども、それをまあ一応ね、我々大学院なので、研究組織なので、研究という形にまとめるっていうことについては、どういうふうに考えたり、模索したりしたりしてますかという質問です。どなたかいらっしゃいますかえっと、今日、あのー、このシッププロジェクトに携わっているプロジェクトメンバーがプレナリー欠席でして、えっと、そシップ関連の,ちょっとあのプロジェクトメンバーがいなくて答えられない状況なんです,すいませんあの。後日聞いていただければ、あの M2 のウルシバタというものが、すごいプロの中ではシップさんあのに携わっていますのであの、お聞きいただければと思います。すいませんはい、ありがとうございます。じゃあ、せっかくなので、オンライン寺子屋にもちょっと話を戻しましょうかね。えー、っと、オンライン寺子屋で学べる内容についての質問があるんですけれども、まあ、成功したケースだけじゃなくて、失敗したケースについても学べるのでしょうかということです。どうでしょうはい、えっと、もちろん失敗したケースに関しても学べるっていうのが答えでして、前回も、えっと、前回5月にもイベントがあったんですけどその時も実際どういうふうな失敗をしたとかなんか大変だった話っていうのを聞けたのでさまざ、あ、まなことが聞けるっていう、えー、イベントになっておりますはいありがとうございますそれでは次に行きましょう最後のプロジェクトになりますサムカラです So let's go on to サムカラ the next And final presentation. We are Samkara, a real project in the Graduate School of KO Media Design and Interdisciplinary Research Lab. Working non stop to invent the future of bio design, speculative design, design thinking, circular design, and socially driven design. What's best about Samkara is the people. We're a diverse group of students and researchers led by Professor Matthew Wallman with an equal diversity in backgrounds and skill sets. How do we share our skills and knowledge? In a weekly meeting and some project meeting, We share all our progress and personal life updates. Professor Matthew will always come up with mini exercises to keep the online meeting active. We also invite experts from different areas to give us lectures to expand our knowledge. Now let's dive into what our projects actually are and how we worked on them. For this year's Biodesign Challenge, We had different ideas of creating solutions and designs inspired by nature in our everyday life. However, in order to explore more possibilities of sustainable development, at the end we chose to continue with the project Spittastic, which is to develop a new environmentally friendly material using bird saliva, 
mainly for food preservation, that can be dissolved in water directly after use or buried in the soil for natural degradation and to enhance the nutritional value of the soil. This material is made of bird's saliva, which can be an alternative solution of the existing plastic containers and packages to provide an even better food preservation effect, with the potential of adding nutrients to the food. Our design aims to achieve the SDGs of creating a biodegradable society in the future. Samkar Lab worked with Kurari Inc. to develop more relevant and engaging corporate sustainability reportage. The work ranged from design and market research of recent communication strategies and keyword frequencies to a mapping out of the priorities of the recently released EU Green Deal as a means of benchmarking international sustainability standards. Samkar produced visual language ideas and marketing schemes aimed at improving Karari's sustainability reports for their customers. Here are some parts of our master's students' thesis for this year. With the diversity of their backgrounds, we can see the variety of these following works. Project Tenor from Hannah. Hi, my name is Hannah Nolasco, and my thesis is on the development of a platform called Tenor. Tenor is an alternative emotion self-tracking platform for building emotional acuity in users. It responds to the enduring need for less invasive and intimidating self-tracking technologies in HCI for mental health, as most existing tech has shown to worsen the condition of users due to the feeling of having to meet performance measurements. Rather than use words or colors to classify and track emotions, Tenor asks users to summarize their daily experiences through music creation on a keypad. This removes the binary classification of good and bad days and makes the process of defining emotions more meaningful and less overwhelming. Tenor operates under the belief that improving emotional acuity over emotional stability empowers the user to better themselves versus appealing to externally imposed standards. Project Climate Change from Lawrence. Climate Changed is a project aimed at developing a framework and online course for climate change communication. This research was conducted in collaboration with the CIAP at the United Nations in Tokyo, and the objective is twofold. First, the idea is to create a framework for more effectively communicating about climate change related issues and statistics in Japan. The second goal is to develop an online course for employees of statistical offices within the Asia Pacific region to help them better understand how to communicate about climate change in relation to the SEEA which is a statistical standard that is used worldwide. More generally, this research project aims to go towards raising awareness on climate change and also understanding how to go beyond that. Project Tsugi from Olivia. DV はとてもゆっくりと始まったのでなかなか気づくことができませんでした。単に夫婦の揉め事警察に介入してもらうほどではないと思っていましたなぜ夫を怒らせたのかとまで聞かれ私が感じた恐怖には全く聞く耳を持ってくれませんスキー is an interactive simulation that shares the testimonials of battered women's experiences with domestic violence. Their stories are divided into three main sections experience, institutions, and current situation. スキー's objective is to serve as an educational tool for society to improve how we see and help domestic violence victims in hope for a better future for them. This simulation was developed in collaboration with AWARE. An NPO that has more than 20 years of experience helping GV victims in Japan. If you are interested in the project or want more information, feel free to contact me. Project Chagara from Yuki. This project is about creating value out of waste. I focused on T. Hanks and researched the materials and Made several prototypes. I participated in GAD and worked with the local students to develop materials that could be used as a substitute for leather and make 
prototypes. After returning to Japan, I continue to make materials and work with the research institute to verify and select the best product. In particular, we r e currently working on the insole that can best utilize the deodorizing and antibacterial effect of tea hangs and the unique smell of tea. Here are some messages from our GID students. My name is Kevin Lee. I'm studying global innovation design at the RCA. I have a background in software engineering,、uh, working first at Facebook and then moving on to freelancing web development and graphic design. I'm interested in playful feature interfaces and I'm working on differences between trust in Eastern and Western、uh, user interface design. Hello, my name is Sarah Dodge. I'm a student with global innovation design from the RCA and Imperial College London. I have a background in public space design and biology, most recently combining the two in designing biophilic spaces. And I'm currently working with Sam Cara on communicating environmental impact and sustainability and researching bio based materials. Hello, I'm Marco. I'm part of Global Innovation Design and I'm working in communication strategies and brand activism. I've been working with Nesta and with Wacom as a creative strategist. And actually, now I'm working on projects about human autonomy, positive computing, and I want to bring these competencies into Samkara to try to find new communication strategies for sustainability. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. From human scale perspective to Earth scale perspective, we would like to place our research. As one of the driving forces for our society. Not only the diversity of knowledge and culture, but also the integration between design, technology, and new innovations that we have created to cope with the new normal. With the post pandemic world at the moment, it has become such a big challenge for all of us. However, we chose to stick together and keep exploring the world, hoping for a better future. We are Samkara, a real project in the Graduate School of KO Media Design. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much, Samkara. So, we do have questions about cost. So, we got a question about recycling materials cost, especially about, like, for example, the Bird's Nest project. Anyone want to talk about how it's collected or how the costing is, is about? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Like,、um, I actually designed this project. And、um, so, for the cost,、uh, we are trying to do to see if there's any like chemical analysis was. Uh, like, can be used to、um, like, uh, design this new kind of material. And because we, like, I kind of do the research about the edible, the edible bird nest, which is kind of like、um, traditional food and also be considered as supplement in China, but because it was kind of expensive, as the comment mentioned. So, to make it can be widely used in our daily life. We want to see like, if we could uh, uh, like, extract or like, then use something like 3D printers to, pre to like, print out the material has the same、um, like, chemical an element and also the same function to be used as a new kind of material. Okay, thank you.、Um, let's welcome Hannah. Uh, since we're having a discussion on the chat right now about your Tenor project and Tenorion, you want us yeah, to speak、hi. a bit more? Um, sure. Uh, where to begin? Um, this study was actually inspired by a conversation with a friend in which they expressed to me that they have a hard time talking to people about. Their emotions, and they'd much rather process it、um, through writing fictional characters. And from there, I well, went into research on HDI technologies for mental health, and I found that there were a lot of 
issues with the current tech that exists because it doesn't really, um, the performance metrics actually add more pressure to users rather than encourage them to be more open with themselves and be more um, comfortable with self-improvement strategies. So from there, I decided to try something new and develop a way to make emotion self-tracking less invasive and less overwhelming because a lot of people who need this application actually suffer from a subclinical phenomenon in which um, finding the words to define and express their emotions is almost impossible. So that's something that I wanted to address with my study. Hey, thank you very much. I'm sure you can keep discussing with the faculty here. They're interested in your stuff. Yeah, I'd love to. There's a lot of future work potential that I'm excited about. Okay. Okay, thank you very much, Samkara. And this is actually the end of all of our real projects. And so then I would like to pass the baton to our Dean, Professor Masa. Okay, thanks very much everyone uh, for a wonderful presentation. Um, I hope you got inspired and motivated and will continue to um, monitor us uh, evolving and doing challenging things. So um, here are some information. If you would like to join um, this endeavor of designing a desirable future, or desirable futures of different kinds, um, please uh, contact us. You can join us uh, as students, master or PhD students, or you can also um, collaborate with us through our corporate partnership at, listed here. Uh, for the information session um, for students um, who might be interested in joining us in the, in the new future, uh, immediately after this session, there will be information session. Unfortunately, it will be in Japanese, but if you're interested, please, um, please feel to join. Um,え、え、3日、4日を開けておいてください。そして竹芝に来てください。毎年1回、え、はい、お疲れ様です。安藤です。安藤君が今年の総合ディレクターを務めてくれます。よろしくお願いします。一言何か。一言。えっと、多分あの、散々僕らコロナのせいで、まあ、あの、僕自体もケムジ収支からずっと
我慢してきたというよりは貯めてきたっていうニュアンスで後から見れるようにしっかりとこの回まとめていきたいと思ってます。よろしくお願いします。ありがとうございます。えっと音楽も教育もスポーツもお笑いもありとあらゆる分野のちょっと先の新しい未来をみんなで作っていくイベントですのでそこでお待ちしてます。はいありがとうございました。えというわけでまだ本当に開催できるかどうかというのはあのギリギリまでわ、えー、からないわけですけれども、えー、ハイブリッドな社会、えー、サイバーでも活動するしフィジカルでももちろん活動するというこの新しい社会の在り方を、えー、少しずつ形に実際にできればいいなと考えておりますのでもし、えー、と実現したらばぜひあのご参加いただきたいと。So,、uh, we are unsure whether our physical、um, forum can take place、uh, due to this COVID 19、um, pandemic. We're still under state of emergency. So, we are not sure, but hopefully,、um, if allowed, we will host our KMD Forum 2021 in Takeshiba Satellite、um, with Choto Saki no Mirai, which is just a little bit of、um, into the future. Uh, it's a very playful, creative event、uh, with music, sports,、um, entertainment, and of course, academic activities from us will be、um, exhibited. So, if this happens,、uh, we welcome you to join.、Um, and if not,、uh, please join us for, to co create the desirable futures.、Um, otherwise, we'll see you somewhere、um, and hopefully collaborate together in the future. So, thank you very much、uh, for joining us. Minasan, a no, a guy, Ida, Arigato Gozaimashita. So, the Deva, a Kore de KMD, a no plenary meeting, Kokai Ban, O, Shujo Staito, Omoimas. So, this is the end of our、um, KMD plenary meeting 2021、um, online and for the、um, release to the public for the very first time.、Um, thank you very much for joining. Deva, Arigato Gozaimashita.